Hi everyone, we are back and now we're going to answer the question, are my rolling velocities normally distributed? So, we're going way back, um, we had our rolling velocities here, standard deviation of this, 138 samples. We find, so we observe that between there are 15 measurements, so greater than, so measurements greater than 3.4, um, 43, where 43 less than 2.8, uh, we find there are 15 measurements of velocity greater than 3.4, 43 less than 2.8, we find that the, there are 37 measurements between 2.2 and 2.8, and uh, we, and finally, 136 measurements between 2 and 4. So, are the velocities normally distributed at a 5% significance level? So, this is a chi-squared test, observed, and we have to figure out expected here. So, if these are truly normally distributed, we can use our good old friend Mathematica and figure out by integrating our PDF. Again, see everything connects in this class. Um, we can understand. We can actually figure out in z values. We can figure out what are our expected values here. So let's define some parameters. While well, Mathematica opens up, here we go. Let's define our z function. I'm going to move this over just a quick second. Z function, we need our measure and x, uh, mu, and sig underscore. So x minus mu divided by sig. Shift enter. We need our PDF equals 1 divided by square root, square root of 2 times pi. exponential of minus z squared divided by 2. And we can go ahead and we can ask ourselves some of these questions. So we want to find what we expect. Um, so greater than 3.4. So we need to integrate our PDF from z of z function 3.4 2.938.376. From that, we need to actually integrate this z from this to infinity. Infinity. And we need to multiply that times 138. So we would expect to obtain basically 15 you know, um, 15 samples. So this is my, I'm gonna call this my E1. So that's gonna be the value here. Um, my E2, expected two, let's see what we've got moving on here. And then let's find 50 measurements, velocity greater than 3.4, um, 43, less than 2.8, so now we need to do this. Uh, integrate PDF do, 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 from minus infinity, and then it's 2.8, I believe so. Yes, sorry. So that would be my expected here. My E3 is gonna be equal to integrate. And then we can go up from my uh, 50 measurements. Uh, uh, 2.2 and 2.8, okay. So z function of 2.2, 2.938, 2 0.376. Shift enter here. Integrate. We need to multiply times times 138. And then, finally, 
These are our expected, the last expected value of four here. And that's from two to four. There we go. So those are our expected values here. So now we can start to set it up and solve in R. So let's go ahead and start to solve. Uh, let's pull up R. Let's get this. Let's get some of these values going here. So I can go ahead and just do, I'm just gonna go and enter a bunch of lines here so we can just see. I'm going to do, where is my, let's actually shift it over here. My little bit, little bit more. Let me just reduce you a little bit more. All right, so we can go ahead and say my observed, oops, observe is equal to C 15, 43, 37, 136. Control enter that. I'm gonna pull in my Mathematica values and we're just gonna say my predict or predicted goes to C of this comma this, this. Now, one thing that you'll notice here is this is not, we don't have a scenario here where the probabilities are going to kind of um, emerge, um, but we can do this trick called um, rescale. So, if, for example, if I do chi, chi squared test and I say x equals observe and p equals predicted, and I try to run it, it's, it's not allowing me to do so. So I could do simulate p-value, and I could put true. So that, actually, excuse me, rescale.p, uh, as we see right here. Um, so we need to do rescale.p, and then make that true. And we get a value here. We can double check this actually. So actually I'm gonna go ahead and do observe equals, and I'm gonna do 15, 43, 37, 136. And I'm gonna do expect equals E1, E2, E3, E4. We can see if we get the same value. So we are gonna do observed one, minus expect one. Let's look at the chi, I think it's the, let's go up. Yeah, observe, I'm, I'm looking at if the square is there. So this is all the way, do, 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 do. So let's go ahead. Let's get the observed minus expected square divided by expected. And we're going to do a sum of these. So I'm going to do a table i, 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 from i from 1 to length of observed. Then we're going to do total. That should be my... We can go ahead and pull up our r. So we can see actually our chi-squared is a little bit different here. Uh, and again, it's because we're rescaling effectively so that this is a probability of one here. Um, so this is a little bit of a, um, it's quite a bit of an issue, um, but we can actually determine if this is actually true for our values. Because again, we're rescaling in this particular problem um, and we're gonna probably actually have to use a different type of test, um, or we can't use this rescaling essentially um, to sum to one. Um, so we can't really effectively do that here. Instead, we're gonna have to use a different, um, a different way to solve this problem. Um, so we can't really do this exact value because it's not a scenario where we can effectively do the sum. So we're going to have to calculate that manually here in Mathematica. So let's go back and we can see 
that if we're running at a 5% significance level, now our new is equal to K, which is our outcomes, minus one minus R. R is the fitting parameters, and we're asked, are these, are these values normally, like do they come from a normal distribution? A normal distribution will be fit using mu and sigma. So R will have two additional fitting parameters, variables that we don't have freedom. So already it's K minus one minus two. And the number of outcomes here in this particular problem was one, two, three, four. Four variables effectively. So four minus one minus two, that gives us this chi-squared of basically our 95% or our alpha of 0.5, our nu of one. And we can see we are in the do not reject region because our chi-square experimental, which we have to calculate with Mathematica for these types of problems or manually, um, because again, we're not able to do so in R, that'll be our value. So if you're ever, ever given, does this fit um, or does this match your expectation for different distributions? We have to be careful about this variable R. We have to calculate this manually because there's not this, you know, some probabilities equal to one in this particular problem. Um, and that is it. So we'll see you next time in lecture seven, where we're going to get into total uncertainty, air propagation, um, and bias hair. So see you next time.